Hello, I'm going to show you today how to make your own fresh cheese. I hope that it saves you a lot of money and I hope that it makes you happy. Well, let's get into the recipe. Oh, but along the way, we're going to be learning about the secret byproduct of cheese making and how it can actually save you your money twice over. Now let's get into it. First, of course, we're going to need some milk. And this is actually where we're going to save a lot of those dollar reduce. The secret is buying milk that's reduced for quick sale. So let's do some quick maths to show just how much money we're actually going to be saving. I bought this milk for 72 cents a litre and it made 150 grams of cheese from each litre. So that brings the cost of cheese that I made to about $4.80 a kilo. Now, when I compare this lovely cheese that I made with the cheapest, worst cheese that you could buy at the supermarket, this is $4.80 a kilo, and this is $8 a kilo. Nice! So this brings me to another really important thing about buying milk for cheese making. And I think it's absolutely crucial to be buying milk that's reduced for quick sale rather than other cheap milk. And there's two big reasons. Reason number one is that dairy farmers don't get paid enough for ultra cheap supermarket brand milk. And we should be supporting our dairy farmers rather than starving them out with unfair prices. With milk for drinking that I want to last more than a few days, I always try to buy milk that has a fair price on it, like probably more than two bucks a litre. And reason number two is that buying milk that's reduced for quick sale is doing your part to reduce food waste. When something's reduced for quick sale, it's going to go off in a few days, and if you don't buy it, it's going to go in the bin and get wasted. So get out to the supermarket, buy some milk that's reduced for quick sale, and grab some lemons while you're there because we're going to need them too. Second, you need something acidic. I use lemons at the moment because it's winter and they're in season, so they're super cheap or free if you know someone that has a lemon tree. And I just use one lemon's juice for each litre of milk. So if you've got two litres of milk to make into cheese, use two lemons. If it's summer and lemons aren't in season, I just use three tablespoons of white or apple cider vinegar per litre of milk. And that's all the food ingredients, but you will need some other equipment too. You'll need a fine mesh strainer and some cheesecloth or a thin cotton cloth to line the strainer with. Cheesecloth is hard to come by, any old thin cotton cloth will do. You'll need a pot that will fit the milk in, a nice large bowl to catch all that valuable whey, a wooden spoon or silicon spatula, and if you've got a slotted spoon, I find this really useful too, though it's not strictly necessary. Lastly, the most exciting bit is you'll need whatever you want to flavour your cheese with. I usually go with salt and fresh herbs like rosemary, thyme and oregano that I have growing in my garden, but you can put whatever you like in there. First, we add the milk to the pan and slowly let the milk come to a light simmer, stirring occasionally. If you've got a kitchen thermometer, we want it to be around 80 degrees Celsius or 180 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you don't have a thermometer, we're just looking for the surface of the milk to be frothy and some bubbles around the edge of the pan. The faster you heat the milk, the drier your cheese will end up. So if you prefer a softer cheese, you might want to heat your milk quite slowly. This step will kill any bacteria that might be lurking in the milk and will make the cheese curds form faster. When the milk is hot enough, take it off the heat and add the lemon juice or vinegar. I generally juice my lemons first so it's easier to remove the seeds, but follow your heart. Give it a quick stir and then let it sit for a few minutes. Curds will begin to fall. After about five minutes, give it another stir. If the liquid is yellowish and transparent-ish, you're good to go. But if the liquid is still white and milky, add some more lemon juice or vinegar, give it another little stir and let it sit for another minute or two. It should separate out distinctly into solid white curds and liquid yellow whey like you can see here. Now it's time to strain the cheese. 
If you have a slotted spoon, I find the least messy way to separate the curds and whey without lots of splashing is to scoop the curds into the strainer and then pour the remainder over. But if you don't have a slotted spoon, you can just pour the whole lot into the strainer at once. I tie up my cheese on a clothes horse to hang for an hour or two and let the whey drip out into a bowl or pan below but you could probably just let it sit in the strainer, it might just take a little longer. Once it's stopped dripping, it's time to flavour your cheese. I spread my cheese out on a chopping board and sprinkle over my chopped herbs and as much salt as I'm feeling like. The cheese itself has next to no flavour so it's a fantastic blank canvas for whatever you want it to taste like. Feel free to give it a taste as you go and see what you like. I then store it in whatever jars I have around and just make sure that I use it within a few days. You can use this cheese any way that you would use cottage cheese. It's great in salads, as the cheese in a spinach and cheese pastry, or even in a cheesecake. But my favourite way to eat it is on toast for breakfast with some hot sauce and some fresh herbs. Now we can't forget about the whey. I just rinse out the milk bottle and put the whey back in there and store it in the fridge. Or if I've made a lot of cheese and I have a lot of whey, I freeze some too for later. And that's the recipe. So we're here at the end with our two products, our lovely cheese and our liquid whey. Now you might hear whey and maybe your mind jumps straight to Jim Junkies or maybe Little Miss Muffet sitting on a toffet. And the second one would be more accurate because not only is this whey completely edible, it's actually useful in a whole bunch of different ways. <laughs> you can use it in baking, you can use it in smoothies, you can even use it as a beauty product, and you can use it in your garden to improve your soil life and make your plants really happy and healthy. I have a bunch of videos coming up exploring all the fantastic money-saving tricks for using whey. So stay tuned for those by hitting subscribe, ringing that ding-a-dong bell. I think that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments if you made your own cheese and what you flavoured it with. Thanks for watching. Bye!